So, Hi. yeah, right? Yes. Cool. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. Angie Byron, aka Webchick, and I are at NYC Camp 2014 at the United Nations headquarters. All of this new functionality in Drupal 8 is thanks to some rather radical re-architecturing of Drupal's internals in a lot of places. But that re-architecturing gives us also simplicity benefits and some other uh, major improvements in the developer experience. People working with Drupal, learning Drupal for the first time. Can you talk about that a little? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you're exactly right. Like one of the, in addition to the user facing changes, which are pretty significant, um, there's also been very significant refactoring under the hood to essentially turn Drupal, uh, which was traditionally a procedural and name naming convention basically based application to something more object-oriented, extensible through modern architecture. And by modern, I mean like 40 years ago. So like, you know, but modern for PHP, um, you know, architecture that, that is more, uh, more in line with what everyone else is doing. Um, and it's been, it's not been without its contention for sure, you know. So I, I want to talk a little bit about the origins of that, which was, um, you know, Dries, who's the project lead of Drupal, really felt that you know, with Drupal 7, we had really reached this tipping point where Drupal 6 and below were really this really easily accessible, hackable system where you could just jump in with pretty very little knowledge and sort of, you know, hack things together until you kind of got something working and then move on. Um, because it used raw SQL to, to, to query the database. It, it, you just had to name, use naming conventions for things. But in Drupal 7, we sort of broke that mold and Drupal 7 became a little more advanced to the point where like we actually use an OR, or not an ORM, but a, a, an object-oriented database abstraction layer. And we started getting into things like automated tests, and we had a new entity system that required knowledge of all these different parts. And so it, it became the point where it was, a, it was too inaccessible for just like weekend hackers to just jump into and fix. But then at the same time, the, the ways that we extended Drupal in Drupal 7 and below were just oddball to people who were used to any other language. I remember actually when I came into Drupal, I was a summer of code student and I had to learn what hooks were and I could not figure it out because I had learned things like Java and C Sharp and you know, all these things in school. And I had done a little bit of PHP programming as well, you know, all on, on the side, but there, never had I heard of something where I name a function a certain way and then all of a sudden it triggers an event and it was just foreign concept to me. And it's a foreign concept to everybody and you have to train, the, train them on what that is. And so Dries really felt it was important that since we hit this tipping point, we either need to simplify Drupal, go back to the old days where it was hackable and, and things, which didn't seem like it was realistic because we'd made it all that flexible for a reason. There were valid reasons for all of it. Or move in the other direction and start embracing these modern standards and patterns that are in other languages and other frameworks and, and making it so that it's more accessible to a broader spectrum of developers. And so that's the direction that he chose to take the project in and that's the direction we, we went with. So what I think you'll find when Drupal 8 is out, right now, you know, we're still building it, so it's a bit of a mess. But when, you, when Drupal 8 actually is shipping, I think what you'll find is if you, to have any experience in any other language other than PHP, um, it will be really accessible to you. It uses classes, inheritance, it uses interfaces, it, you know, it, it has namespaces, all of the stuff that you'd expect from modern programming languages is all in there. If you learn PHP before 1996 or so, it's going to be a little challenging for you because before PHP 5, PHP didn't really do object-oriented programming. So a lot of us who learned back in the day just, you know, print variables and, and a bunch of functions and we call them and things like that. And if you've never had experience with object-oriented programming, it will be a bit challenging. But if you've learned PHP anytime from when PHP 5 came out on, it's going to be pretty accessible to you because it's all the same stuff that you've seen and you've, if you've done any work with Symfony or Laravel or any of these other PHP frameworks, it, it's all going to look the same to you. 
Um, and we've actually seen a lot of really positive, you know, every time I give a, my Drupal 8 talk at a camp, I say, how many people does this look familiar to you when I show code samples and the whole room raises their hands. So, so I think what our challenge as a community is that subset of people who either learned PHP back in the day, like myself, or people who learned PHP via Drupal because they started out not knowing any PHP and then kind of had to learn it to extend Drupal, they're going to have a tougher time because there's a lot of concepts for them to learn. But the good news is because every other language works this way, there's a ton of resources out there to help you understand what object-oriented programming is. And the thing that I really like about it is instead of it working off of people's goodwill of following conventions, it actually enforces like guidelines and rules and structures so that programming is actually easier to understand. So uh, yeah, so that's, that's what I can say about the developer experience. A couple of specific examples would be, um, you know, in, in Drupal 7, if you wanted to make a field, there's something like 10 or 12 field hooks. And you need to implement, I think, four of them, but you have no idea which ones. And so what I often do is I just give up and I just copy and paste text module and start changing it, you know. Versus in, in, in object-oriented programming, what you get is an interface, which is a single file that defines all of the, it defines the API for what you're working with. So it has functions like, I don't know, in the case of fields, it would probably have functions like validate and save. And then you know, oh, this is what I can do with a field. And all the documentation is right there. And so it's, it's actually really, really helpful, I think, for new developers to understand Drupal. And the existing developers will already know all of the concepts, so if they won't have to come up to speed on things like enemies and views. They'll just have to come up to speed on the, on the object orientation stuff. But there's a huge commitment from all the people working on Drupal 8 to get the documentation right, get the developer experience right, so that people come to Drupal 8 and they love it. So that's what we're working on right now as we try to get Drupal 8 into beta. There's also been a, a lot of unification around the internal, like the CRUD operations. Yep. Now in Drupal 8, if you learn how one system works, those principles are going to work across all of the internals. Yeah, and yeah. And how many were there in Drupal 7? Well, it's a little bit apples and oranges, because in Drupal 7, it was hooks for everything. So you learn okay. one extension mechanism, which is a hook, but then there's like 50 different ways of using hooks. There's yeah. info hooks, there's event-driven hooks, there's all this kind of stuff. In Drupal 8, there's we sort of give you access to all of those systems. So if you learn YAML, and you learn the plugin system, and you learn uh, how to make controllers, that's a huge chunk of Drupal right there. Because like plugins, for example, once you learn plugins, that single API will be applicable to blocks, image styles, text formats, like all kinds of different things. As opposed to in Drupal 7 and below, each of those had a separate distinct API that was different from one another. You had to learn each one's different course. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, so it, you know, it's 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 you know, it's definitely going to be challenging for people upgrading their modules that they've never dealt with object oriented programming before. But once they have, it's 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 pretty awesome. Uh, and there's a lot of tools out there. There's the Drupal Module Upgrader Project, which will attempt to port your code for you. Uh, there's a scaffolding project that was talked about here. I don't remember the URL of it. Hopefully, we can get that. But um, there's a scaffolding project which actually generates the code for you if you know you want this, that, or the other thing. And, and so there's a lot of people are doing a lot of work to make that transition as easy as possible. Scaffolding is done by Jesus Manuel yep, Olivas and right. he is going to be coming on the podcast to demo that. There you go. And we will link to that here. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drupal 8 is incorporating all sorts of aspects from off of our old isolated Drupal island, right? <laughs> Not only do we have an up-to-date uh, supported ver fast version of PHP, in PHP 5.4, but we've got external libraries and, and all sorts of helpful pieces from Symfony 2, from Guzzle, um, front end stuff. We're, you know, we've gone through the bazaar and collected a whole bunch of stuff. I've been getting out meeting some of the people in those communities and getting to know those other open source projects better, and it's incredibly, I've been welcomed and people are telling me, hey, you Drupal kids, you're back, <laughs> you know? Yep. Um, and they're getting excited about integration projects, about taking Drupal as their content management layer instead of building something every time. Um, what's, what's your impression of our reception in the greater PHP world with these changes that are going on? Yeah, I think our reception has been great. I, I feel like I feel like PHP itself as a language is kind of going through a renaissance right now, where you know PHP kind of has this reputation as this ugly, you know, like nasty little language that's full of security holes and stuff. And and what I've seen is a lot of people, uh, especially lately, sort of trying to figure out how can we, you know, better work together as a as the 
global PHP community, how can we start start addressing some of these things in PHP core? You know, and it's actually been really exciting to be part of that. I feel like Drupal uh, in particular, like when as as we've started moving towards helping these other projects upstream, um, we we've, we've been very well received, and and vice versa. I think you know we've had Symphony folks at the at the DrupalCon in Portland and had a big sprint there with with those guys and. Um, yeah, it's, it, I think the, the reception has been phenomenal. I think the opportunities there are huge. You know, we, we, we have examples of where we've fixed bugs for us and then they get used by, you know, dozens of other projects, which just feels really, really great, you know. And, and it, similarly, we get to benefit from, from similar things when, when, you know, someone who uses Guzzle fixes a bug in Guzzle, we update the new version of Guzzle, we get new features. It's, it's just, it's win-win all around. Um, and I feel like it's it's really helped Drupal's reputation as a project in the global PHP community. It's really important because the, the global PHP community is enormous and we can stand to benefit a lot from learning from them and also teaching other people what we learned. So we're sort of scaling out our open source practice, right? We're not just <laughs> sharing with each other in our little echo Drupal beautiful. It's a beautifully adorned echo chamber, but yes, it's... Yeah. But no. we've opened the windows and we're yeah. letting some... <laughs> <laughs> getting some air in there. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, yeah. And I, and I think you know. I think for the most part, that's that's been great. You know, there's there's some people who, you know, I, I think I think Drupal got criticized a lot in the past for sort of this not invented here syndrome. Like we think we can do things better than everybody else. And I think that overall mind shift that has happened within the core development team that like, well, maybe we could do it better, or maybe they can do it better, and we could just use what they've got and then spend our time working on our problems instead of those other problems. And I think overall, I think there's some challenges there with how we're going to manage security releases and things like that that shouldn't be taken lightly and we've got plans in the works for how we're going to do all that but I think on the whole what we'll see is uh, in Drupal 8 something that not only combines sort of best of breed technologies from all over the place in PHP but also something that instead of Drupal only being good at this much of, of the web problems out there could actually expand the entire scope <laughs> because if you know, you know Drupal's great if you need community and users and you need uh, products or you know content that kind of thing but then if you just want to set up like a one page site that just has a search box on it and, you know something like that you can use Drupal for it, but it's not like great at it but by Drupal expanding to take the entire full stack of, 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 of PHP down to the low level isolated framework components all the way up to an application level um, I think it's I think it's excellent because you learn one platform and you can do anything mm. thank you for your time <laughs> thank you and thanks for all the hard work on Drupal 8 to you and sort of uh, to everyone else yeah. as well. Thank you. It's, yeah. I'm really Thanks excited. Thanks to the 2,000 people who have contributed to Drupal 8. Have Yay. we hit 2,000 now? Yep, we're 2011 oh. now. Sure. Okay, yeah. high five for that. Yes, awesome. All right. Thanks, Thanks. a lot, Jim. Thank you. All right. And Drupal 8 is incorporating components from Symphony 2, Gazel. Uh, I know it's very moving. <laughs> oh, Gazel. <laughs> <laughs>